Good afternoon, Kevin Martin here. Thanks for joining me on this module. So I've recreated real student applications in order to show you what your admissions reviewer will see whenever you submit uh, your Applied Texas application, your essays, your resume, and so on. So even though UT's changed up some of their requirements, they have a few short answer questions they require students to write on for first time freshmen, the mechanics of file review don't change all that much. So these, these essays, the expanded resume, these are simply tools by which reviewers are receiving information. And at the end of the day, like a human reading a college application, uh, the underlying psychology of it is, is going to be you know, relatively similar regardless of, of the selectivity of an institution or if it's a review by committee. You know, every university has their, their nuances, whether it's a score on one to five or pluses or minuses, or if it's a strong recommendation or rather than a weak, weaker one. But um, I think seeing a real application and, and, and seeing it through the eyes of an admissions reviewer will help demystify the process a little bit and show you, you know, exactly how it is that reviewers are interpreting and perceiving the things that you're writing. So, um, like I say, I've recreated the applications, even down to, to, the, uh, to the font that your reviewer will see. It's kind of this notepad type of font. Um, there's also like a toolbar reviewers can have access to, so if they want to jump from section to section, they, they can do so. Um, I'm not going to actually review the application today. That'll be in the second part, but um, I want to show you what they're what they're looking at. So I've anonymized the student's name, but everything else here is is the student's real information. In this upper half of the first page, they're looking for uh, markers of hardship or uh, signs that the student comes from a historically marginalized group, or they're from a low socioeconomic uh, status family or if they're you know, coming from a, an urban high school or a rural environment or a type of school that doesn't send that many students to college, your reviewer is going to note the parents' level of education because research indicates students who come from a first-generation college family are um, less likely to pursue college, less likely to graduate. So they're looking for indicators to provide context to the rest of the application. They're also going to see if this is an in-state, out-of-state, or foreign applicant. Um, they're going to look at the students, of course, their first choice major in the instance of this student's uh, engineering. They'll also have access to the student's academics. So the academic index score is provided for the reviewer so they have an idea of how that student has done academically. So this is a student from a non-ranking high school, and I've uh, estimated the student's class rank. So this student's in roughly the top 15 percent, uh, provided their test scores here. Also indication of uh, noting the reviewer to expect an expanded resume. I've also recreated the notable uh, courses for the student senior year course schedule, and I'll do that through the rest of the uh, applications as well. For those of you who have completed, uh, looked at Apply Texas, this section will look familiar to you. These extracurricular activities um, is literally copied from or transcribed from Apply Texas to this uh, admissions review portal. So you can see the uh, position, number of hours per week, weeks per year. Um, so this is literally what you self-reported. The same goes for your volunteering and service. So you can see the, the reviewer has access to the total number of hours, the uh, type of activity that you're doing. Same goes for any awards, honors, scholarships you may have been awarded, and then also any employment, internships, summer activities. <clears throat> Again, I'm not reviewing the application right now. I'm just showing you what your reviewer is seeing. Same goes for the essays. So one thing to note is that if you have special formatting in your essays, like italics, bold, some of the special characters sometimes don't render correctly, so it's really important to, you know, review that um, apply Texas submission before you actually submit this, you know, send it over through the submit button. You'll see the essays are about one, one page to one and a half pages. Again, I know that UT requires some short answers now, but in practice, this essay B, they've essentially, you know, broken down into three different parts, asking specific questions about your you know, your career goals, academics, and leadership. But in practice, a lot of students were writing SAB to answer those questions anyways. And so for that reason, it's still useful to review these applications since these are, you know, real student examples. Again, if you're using uh, song quotes, you're using any sort of formatting or spacing, be, be mindful of that before you hit the submit button on Apply Texas. One thing that will render as with the formatting is your expanded resume. This is something that you upload after you submit Apply Texas. Um, this will upload with whatever formatting you have. The best way to upload it is usually a PDF. 
So you can see as students kind of expanded upon the different activities that they've done since those applied Texas spaces don't have that much opportunities to do so. The student has also noted the number of total number of volunteer hours they have, and I think that's a good practice to make it easy for your reviewers so they're not having to do mental math on that section. And also at the end, I will provide kind of the student's admissions outcome, whether they were admitted or denied. You know, a lot of you, especially some pr private universities, smaller universities, during their admissions presentations actually do activities like this. And I'll ask the room, you know, would you admit or deny the student or maybe defer them to a later round? Um, so I'll essentially do that here. When we're talking about admissions review, we're really talking about probabilities. So it's not so much like a room of 100 people will see the application exactly the same. Instead, what ends up happening is there's a range of scores. Like during our file review training, we would uh, work through sample applications just like this. And there'd be 100 of us in a room and they'd say, how many, how many of you think this is a one or think it's a two? You know, a few people might raise their hands for a three. You know, then there's kind of a, a, an even mix between four and fives. And then what one reviewer might see as a three, like another reviewer might see as a six. And so I'll provide some admissions probabilities of how reviewers might see it. I'll provide my own analysis and then also let you know what I think this student actually received in practice. So this is the first module. I'll actually review this application in the second one. So stay tuned for that.